Well, welcome once again. This is the Doctor of Digital, the Doctor of Digital podcast. Purpose of the show is to transform your business and life with education and inspiration. I introduce busy business leaders to trends in business technology and marketing to highlight people you should know. Are you ready to revolutionize your digital marketing strategy and unlock the true potential of your website? Join me as we dive into the world of effective online engagement with my guest, James Hipgen, a seasoned expert who's about to share his insights on capturing visitor attention in just six seconds. From his unconventional start rushing in the rock and roll industry to working with giants like Wells Fargo, Apple, and Visa, James brings over four decades of marketing experience to the table. This former music graduate turned digital marketing guru has a unique approach that demystifies complex strategies for business owners and entrepreneurs. With a career spanning South America, Spain, and Chicago, James has honed his skills to help small businesses thrive in the digital landscape, focusing on practical, jargon-free advice that cuts through the noise and delivers real results. During this episode, we'll do a deep dive into all the things that you need to do about the changes and hot topics of an effective website, its biggest challenges, and growth. I will leverage the expertise of my guests and how to navigate the unique dynamics of the field. By the end of this episode, you'll be better equipped to know what to do, and I encourage you to contact my guest, James Hipkin, Digital Marketing Specialist. With that, I want to welcome James to the show. How are you doing today? Hey, I am so happy to be here. I'm really looking forward to talking to you and, and sharing sharing some of our experience with your audience. Well, that's awesome. So, I mean, now that we know that you've been around for a while, can you tell me how did you get started in this in the first place? What's your story? How did I get started in marketing? Yeah. You know, when you graduate with a music degree, I know this will be a shock to you, but corporate America is not banging on your door what yeah i know <laughs> uh, i spent the first six years out of college working in the rock and roll industry working right. in the production side touring with bands and you know learned an awful lot about project management and sure. working with people and you know just it was a very worthwhile experience but it reached a point where I thought, I really think I need to get a real job. And you know, my mother was very happy to hear that. Sure. <laughs> and I recalled a conversation I'd had with the uh, leader, lead singer and bass player in a band that uh, is still active these days. It's a band called Rush. Oh yeah. And this was a very interesting conversation because he was telling me, how they had vertically integrated what they were doing. Hmm. It, it was a business conversation. Not, I mean, you wouldn't expect this, but given, you know, heavy metal rock band, all that good stuff. Yeah. But he was, he was smart, smart guy. And they owned their own publishing. They owned their own record company. They hmm. owned their own trucks. They owned their own sound and lights. And when they weren't using the trucks and the sound and the lights, they would rent it out to other bands. Mm -hmm. And they were, their record company also hired, you know, signed other artists. So they were, they were completely vertically integrated before it was popular to be ver vertically integrated. Right. And that was a fascinating conversation. And it opened my mind that, Hey, you know, maybe, my training as a musician and my experience in the music industry, maybe it could translate across into the business world. Mm. And so I went about getting myself a job as a junior account executive at an advertising agency, thinking that that would be the easiest transition from my somewhat unusual background, if we can put it that way, into the world of business. And that's what I went about, what I was able to accomplish. I got a job at uh, the Toronto office of a New York agency called Ted Bates. And that started me down my path of, you know, applying the things I'd learned in music and in life 
into a business situation. Sure. Um, and that has served me well throughout my career because that ability in music, it's a very linear and logical thing when you look at how it's put down on a paper. But in order to be wonderful, it needs to be interpreted laterally. Mm. And that could take out the word music and put in the word marketing and you've got a perfectly valid definition of what marketing is. You bet. You know, and the other piece about being a musician is you need empathy. You need to be able to listen to what others are doing. And you need to be able to present your brilliance in the context of what others are doing. Mm. And that's another really important aspect of marketing. And it's a piece that's often missed by people. Okay. I call it the, an absence of strategy where they're, they're busily shouting at customers and telling them what to do. Customers don't want to be shouted at and they don't want to be told what to do. But if you're empathetic to their situation and you understand the journey that they are on, the marketing that you're doing is going to be a lot more effective. Yeah. There's a great expression that no one wants to be sold, but everyone loves to buy. And that seems to be so true. Exactly. And, and your goal as a marketer is the purchase should be the next logical step hmm. in your customer's journey as opposed to them feeling, hmm, did I just get tricked into something? Yeah. You know, that's the, the that distinction is really important. And that's, I trace that all the way back to my experience as a performing musician. Well, it, it's been a while now, we could say. So I'm curious if you could talk and address some, what are some of the biggest changes that you have seen over the years? The biggest changes Oddly enough, the principles of marketing really haven't changed. Mm. The tools that people have, the resources that they have, have changed a lot. Yeah. And the speed with which you can do things has mm. changed a lot. So that's what causes an awful lot of the overwhelm and the confusion when it comes to marketing writ large and digital marketing in particular is there are so many choices, so many things going on, so many pushes and pulls that anybody is going to get overwhelmed by that. Right. But what I said at the beginning, the fundamental principles have not changed. You know, and there's a old direct marketing axiom, you know, get the right message to the right person at the right time. And I think there's your six seconds too, right? That's got to happen in six seconds. Well, the six seconds is a re reflection of the, the reality of people's attention spans are, are, are very limited. And, it, you know, a lot of times marketers don't recognize that they're, they do what I call inside out marketing where it's all about them and they're shouting at folks, they're regurgitating everything they can think of on the homepage and expecting the consumer to sort out what's for them and what's mm -hmm. not for them. And one of the more controversial things that I talk about is I want marketers to stop saying call to action, which is, you know, people are like, wait, what? I, I, I spent my entire career, everybody's told me I need to have a call to action. I need to have a call to action. A call to action is a marketer shouting at customers and telling them what to do. Mm -hmm. What I want you to do is replace the call to action with pathways. People like you pathways that call out to an audience, sec set a segment in the audience. And, and, you know, people like you are interested in this sort of thing. And, and we've got information about that mm -hmm. button that says learn more. Now, effectively, a call to action and a pathway are exactly the same thing. But the mindset shift is very important. Sure. Because when that consumer chooses that pathway, two powerful and important things have happened. 
They've told you exactly who they are and they've given you permission to tell them more information, to give them more information, mm. right? Well, where would you rather be as a marketer? You know? yeah. you're, they're in the driver's seat and you're showing them, here's the road to go on, which is your path. Right. And, and that's in that way, you're supporting the journey that they are on, which is building relationship, building trust. And when they choose to purchase your product or service there, it's the next logical step in their journey. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are banding around this whole idea. So I need to ask, it's the hot topic. So it might be what you're saying is the tools and things are changing so rapidly, but what would you say are some of the things that you would say hot growth areas or things that really people should be thinking about considering? Well, I think AI is something that is, you know, it's, it's what email marketing was when first email, when email was first introduced, right? You know, it, it's going to be hugely important. It's still in the very early stages of this. It's yep. still very nascent. And there's an awful lot of people who, who are, are experimenting with it. I'm experimenting with it. We're, we're developing a number of products that are going to use AI. I don't spend a lot of time talking to cons talking to my customers about how the sausage is made. What they're looking for is a result. Yeah. And the same issues, that principle that we talked about, the difference between tactical and strategic and recognizing that, you know, Without a strategy, you're just making pretty noise. The same thing applies to how AI is going on. There's a lot of people using AI in a very tactical way. And it has a use there. I mean, one of the things about websites is that website designers have co-opted uh, a, a concept out of the interior design industry about the, how color works the 60, 30, 10 color strategy, where 60% of the colors on the website are background colors, 30% are your primary and secondary colors, and then 10% are the accent colors. This is why there's a red pillow on a sofa <laughs> in that picture in Architectural Digest, right? Yeah. Um, so we, I wrote a prompt and refined the prompt, took about a month of trading outputs with designer friends of mine. And that, you put in one hex code and it will generate a complete color palette that you can use for your website. That's a very tactical use of mm -hmm. AI, which, you know, levels up. Is it going to be as good as a top tier designer can do? Probably not. Yeah. Is it hugely better than the average person can do? Absolutely. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So I'm curious that there's no such thing as the, the average person, their needs, but there are, might be some things that you could recommend a business owner to be thinking about. What would you say and what kind of things would you offer? Maybe some ideas that they could mull over. Well, the, the key thing to have if you're a business owner is take the time to develop customer avatars. Hmm. Actually build out the four quadrants that are used in, a, in an avatar. The first quadrant is demographics. The next quadrant is characteristics. So demographics is who they are physically, yeah. age, sociodemographic, all that kind of practical stuff. Demographics really help you with media selection. Characteristics is about who they are as people. Are they confident? Are they, you know, insecure? Are they, uh, is all of, how do they think about things? Are they people searching for information? Are they headlines? Are they body copies? You know, who are they as people? Mm. And then what's their pain? What is the thing that they are struggling with? And then what's the gain that they get from you? working with your services. And the order is that I just went through this is very important. Right. Demographics help you choose media, which is the platform that gets the message to them. Characteristics helps the marketer understand how to communicate with these people. 
pain tells the marketer what to talk about. And then gain is your solution to this problem. And that order is in alignment with how the consumers are dealing with things. There's a, a, a very famous copywriting framework called PASS. You're probably familiar with it. Yes. Uh -huh. It's an acronym for problem, agitate the problem, then solve the problem. And then I see so many websites. The very first thing that you see in the hero section of the website is we solve this problem. That's not what the consumer is looking for. The consumer wants to know first and foremost, do you understand the problem that they have? And it's a subtle distinction, but it's a very important distinction. The PASS framework is very effective and very often used because it works. And it can be very effective on a website as well. Don't lead with your solution, lead with their problem. And it's a Maslow's theory that you have to feel safe and secure first. And right. this happens online as well in dealing with people. If I don't feel safe, I'm not moving. You know, for example, I will often ask a business owner, what's the primary objective of your, of your website? Right. And they will give me a litany of things that they want the website to do. So we'll have a little discussion around the meaning of the word primary. There can only be one. Yeah, that's what it means. And, and oftentimes they will gravitate towards conversion. And this is, again, a little bit controversial, it's like my call to action thing. It's almost always wrong. The primary objective of the website should be confirmation. Conversion will come, but your first goal is to confirm in the mind of the visitor to your website that you understand who they are, you understand their problems, you understand what they're looking for. Because the obvious thing is they're thinking, did I come to the right place? Mm -hmm. and, and that is the second way amongst the six ways to engage a website visitor in six seconds or less. The second way is, am I in the right place? Yeah. You know, if they're looking for, for you as a solopreneur and you're out there in networking and you're using your name, and people, that's what people are looking for. Make sure your name is loud and proud on your website. Don't disguise it in some fancy logo. Because that's, people are, to, they want to know, am I in the right place? They see the name that they're looking for and they're going, right, I'm in the right place. Use colors consistently. Use fonts consistently. Use tone consistently. All of these factors support the idea of I'm in the right place. And it's also a trust event yeah, because they're just like, Hmm, I feel good about this. You know, as opposed to, huh, is this what I was looking for? Yeah. What is this? What is this company name up here and this logo thing? What is this all about? What am I doing? You don't want people thinking about all that stuff. Yeah. You want them to go, right, I'm in the right place. And then they can move on in their journey to, okay, so does this person understand my problem? And, and that gets to the second, third way, which is give them a benefit-oriented reason to stay. Right? And that means understanding who they are. That's why we talked about the avatar and the journey map and, and those sorts of things. In the time we have since we covered a lot of ground i'm curious if you could just give a, a short idea of like okay here's some actionable tips like how can i if i'm listening hear what you have to say and apply some tips like right away lead with the benefits you know and then provide reason to believe a very common mistake i see is testimonials buried in a carousel at the bottom of the home page true right? It's a wasted digital real estate. Get one powerful testimonial high up in the page 
so that you can quickly reinforce with people that you are a credible proposition. You don't need a lot. One is usually sufficient. Another effective way to do this is like a, a logo bar. It depends on your business you're in, of course, but I have a client who's a, a senior consultant. Uh, he works with the C-suites of major corporations and one of his anchor clients is Apple. And he has the he has permission to put the Apple logo on his website. Right. Do you know how hard it is to get that? I can imagine. Right. But if you get to his website and you see immediately below the hero section, there's a list, you know, the U S tennis association, Apple, Amazon, all these major corporate logos. You don't, you instantly recognize that this person is credible. Testimonials can be done the same way and then sprinkle the testimonials throughout the website. Um, but, make sure that the testimonial is germane to the topic that page is focused on and get it high on the page Got it. you you want to build that trust and then I get another thing is make the content easy to consume it sounds like an obvious thing but it's a mistake i see all the time True enough. long line links newspapers are done in narrow columns for a reason they're easier to read yeah. Make it easy to read. Don't put white type on top of a light pastel background. Your designer may think it looks awesome, but nobody else does. Right. <laughs> right. So, don't don't put up big blocks of text, even yeah. if it's not grammatically correct. Lots and lots of paragraphs, one sentence paragraphs, two sentence paragraphs. Yeah. You know. Uh, rarely you might want to put in a three sentence paragraph, but mostly it's going to be one sentence and two sentence paragraphs because it's easy to scan. So we've talked about some tips that apply right away. We talked about changes, hot topics, all kinds of things in your method. So now I'm curious, persons listening and hearing, how do they get a hold of you? How do we move forward? Well, I, I love to take a few minutes and, and, and have one-on-one -on -one conversation with people if they go to vipchatwithjames.com you can book 30 minutes on my calendar and we can talk about websites we can talk about digital marketing we can talk about the application of ai in the in the world of marketing strategy um, lots of things we can talk about we can talk whatever you want to talk about um, but that's how i meet people they can find out about me and the work that we're doing for our clients, um, vipchatwithjames.com. Outstanding. I shared a lot in a short amount of time, and hopefully people will reach out because it's well worth it. Thank you very much for your time, James. I really appreciate all the insights you've been able to provide today. Mick, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for taking some time with me. All right. You bet. See you next time then. All right. That was a phenomenal interview you're hearing for a person with lots of experience. So, you know, if you like what you're hearing and other things that are coming on the Dr. Digital podcast, make sure that you share, like, positively respond and share all in your social media. Likes, helps and subscribing to the Dr. Digital podcast really helps a great deal. And, you know, if you want to know more about me, you can find me on helping business leaders break through obscurity, and that's Mastering Presentation Secrets. I help business leaders, CEOs, entrepreneurs break through their obscurity through oral and written presentations, building credibility and authority. Until next time, this is the Doctor of Digital, and I'll be seeing you to sign off for now. Deus Vault.